Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we have another gun gripe episode for you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, we are getting into the to the ultimate question. Are tactical shotguns useless? Well, I think you know the answer, but we're going to articulate a little bit. Because that, that comes into play, right? We're going to articulate a few points that might change your mind one way or the other, hopefully uh, in the, the way that, that I feel. <laughs> I think they are awesome and useful, and I'll explain why. Uh, before we get into this video, I'd like to thank our friends at Sonoran Desert Institute. They have some awesome gunsmithing programs. Uh, you know, if you are wanting a career in firearms technology, uh, in gunsmithing, they have awesome programs, wonderful instructors. Uh, it is an online school. They do a great job. Check them out. Uh, if you've got um, student aid or any GI Bill or anything like that, you know, they accept military benefits. So really good group of people. Check them out. SDI, Sonoran Desert Institute. And we appreciate them being a part of our Gun Gripes episodes. Okay, so... I know that there are going to be some really, really upset people because of this video, but I promise you it's going to be okay, all right? Because you, you run into two extremely different schools of thought on combat shotguns, or let's just say tactical shotguns, whichever you want to call it. One is they're useless, cumbersome, hard to shoot, hard to reload, and it would only be a stopgap thing to fight your way to another gun. And I hate them. And I hate them. <laughs> there's those people. And then there's people that go, all right, well, when, when your enemy needs to be carried off in a wheelbarrow, it's the, it's the good tool for that job, right? And I can't tell you how many firearms instructors, and for the purposes of this video, listen, people, I am not going to name anybody specifically by name. Because I don't want to, I don't want to get into this pissing match with people <laughs> about this instructor believes this or this instructor believes that. But just know, okay, that we know a lot of firearms instructors, and many of them are famous people, and and many of them are dudes that do amazing things on YouTube mm -hmm. with really fast precision. And some of these guys are, you know, huge firearms instructors that do a awesome job, and obviously have developed. Um, tactics and a teaching regimen that seriously works. Mm -hmm. So we're not questioning any of that. But I am going to draw on some experiences of some things that we've heard from instructors. And again, they will remain anonymous mm -hmm. in this video. All right. So <laughs> when Eric mentioned this video concept to me, the first thing I always think about is... <laughs> I hate using this term so much, but stopping power. Power. I think about power. Stop power. power. All right, so a 12-gauge buckshot load or a 12-gauge slug has a lot of energy, okay? Both in your shoulder and downrange, but we're, we're mainly talking about downrange, okay? So I think of, all right, are tactical shotguns useless? Well, no, they're not because you've seen so many videos out there, okay, body cam and dash cam videos from police encounters, okay? Uh, violent encounters that involve the discharge of firearms, all right? Duty weapons. All right, you see some some dude, like, not complying, hopped up on God knows what kind of freaking drugs, okay? And just balls to the wall like crazy, all right? Won't comply. You see a 12-gauge buckshot load gets sent down range, and what's the next thing you see? Dude on the ground, incapacitated, out of the fight. The threat is stopped. All right. You see guys uh, with 9mm sidearms, all right, which is typical standard issue all right, these days. Like 9mm has been making a huge comeback as a duty weapon, all right? Uh, you see guys hopped up on the same kind of stuff, whatever. Round after round after round gets pumped into these guys, and they do not stop, and it puts the officer's lives in danger, okay? And it could put your life in danger as well in that situation. Now, is, is it conceivable and is it practical to try to conceal a tactical shotgun on your person to everyday carry? No. no. Is it is it practical to conceal a 9mm handgun? Yes. So there is that distinction for sure. But when we're talking about pure energy and pure stopping power, 
I mean, a tactical shotgun, I mean, it, it's, it's got it. I mean, there there is a considerable energy dump that is occurring with a shotgun round. And, oh God, uh, yeah. There there is a lot of a lot of mass going down range and a lot of power. Uh, so we'll talk about some pros and cons. So I'm not going to mention which instructors, but some. All right, I was asking one instructor recently. I was like, hey, blank so and so. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what do you think about running some auto shotguns like do you have a class on some auto shotguns or what do you think about the tactical applications of some auto shotguns and the answer was not what i expected it was more like well if you have to i could see you know maybe a stop gap or you know to fight your way to another gun or i don't like them mm. they're too hard to, they're they're cumbersome to load under stress they're difficult to use so all right some pros and cons mm. to their credit I understand if there's a more effective tool, right? If an AR is a much more usable platform, say a Daniel Defense Mark 18, super easy to shoot, fast uh, follow-up shots, real easy manual of arms to operate under stress, quick to reload, uh, easy to assess issues, apply the safety, maneuver the firearm in close quarters. I get it, right? The AR is hard to beat um, as a close quarters personal defense weapon. And pistols obviously have their place because of their maneuverability and concealability on your person. So there's a different tool for a different job, and I understand that. So to, so to their credit, it would be, all right, well, I'm more precise with a rifle, and I feel like a shotgun is an inaccurate weapon that leaves a little bit too much to chance mm -hmm. of me not being precise. All right, fair. That is a fair assessment. And I'm not claiming to be a trainer or even qualified to say what is good and what isn't. However, when we look at the pros and cons of the shotgun, so we'll start out. A few things that are beneficial to shotguns is the massive energy dump. Okay, so you've got a lot of energy going down range. A lot of close encounters with firearms are over in usually like less than 10 rounds and usually like seven yards, eight yards, that's about the distance that you're going to get in some, to some potential uh, you know, personal defense situation. So my thing is, if I'm statistically probably not even going to log more than 10 rounds anyway, why not throw a big pill down range? Mm -hmm. Especially if you're at home and it's a home defense weapon or something like that, and you are prepared for like a home invasion or something along those lines, then yes, why not have a shotgun by the bed? This Benelli M4 holds nine rounds, and this represents uh, definitely like the top of the heap mm. for a good uh, quality semi-auto shotgun. So what are some of the cons? All right, so let's approach it from the standpoint of why many of these instructors <clears throat> I've talked to who will remain nameless <laughs> don't like shotguns well right. one is probably because they're so cumbersome to they are cumbersome to reload they are because you have a tube all right now we're not right. talking about magazine fed shotguns magazine fed shotguns are a completely different animal and they come with their own quirks all right that have to be eliminated in order to get them running 110 percent right a tube fed shotgun 99.9999 percent of the time if you feed it quality ammunition and your spring is up to snuff and it's a, a nice fresh spring, you are not going to have any problems with these guns. But you have to put all those rounds back in this tube. Now they make big old special apparatuses that you've seen like Jerry Mitchell like use that hold mm -hmm. like six or seven shots, maybe even more, and he can go yeah. and load them all at one time, right? And throw them down, but you're not going to be carrying that on a regular basis. You're not going to have it by your bedside to like speed reload. Well, unless you're Jerry, I guess. Maybe he, he's got one by the bed. Don't break in Jerry's house. All right, please don't. Please don't. But also, one of the things, too, is the ammunition for the, the amount of like... I guess the volume of ammunition, say you have a little box, right? You can fit way more 9mm or 5.56 in that little space than you can 12 gauge. You know, less ammunition for the same amount of weight carried. So mm -hmm. if you're going to carry this into some sort of scenario, you're not going to be able to carry as much ammunition on your physical person as you would if you had an AR and you were carrying 30 round magazines. All One right. limitation that you may consider as well is you are a little bit limited on the effective range that you're going to yes. be. I mean, I would I would say by most standards, and we've done a lot of testing, if you're good with slugs, you could probably fight with a shotgun inside of 150 meters, 
But I, I would say really where these things, where the rubber meets the road with a shotgun is 50, 50 yards and in, 50 meters and in. You know, and that's close very range. extenuating circumstances. I mean, yes. we're talking about like normal Joe Blow who's going to be using a shotgun for the most part. Yeah, in the home or whatever. So to be fair, okay, yeah, when you look at three-gun shooters, they usually have a lot of very specialized equipment mm -hmm. to facilitate the fast reloading uh, of their shotguns. It usually involves some type of a special beveled, um, you know, well in here mm. that they'll add, or they'll add some type of a guide mm. uh, to help them get the rounds in there a little bit easier. Extended so, magazine tubes. Yeah, big yeah. tubes. So to the credit of many of the firearms instructors that I've discussed this with at length, I can understand that, yes, in an extremely stressful situation, let's say you've emptied your shotgun and you must now reload it while moving, right? You've got to move, you've got to hide, you've got to take cover and reload your shotgun all without getting yourself shot in the process. Okay, yeah, that's scary. And when we are subjected to these high stress situations, right, it's easy to fumble and drop something. You gotta think, you're grabbing loose rounds and putting them in one by one. So it is a little slow to reload. The way that I tend to treat shotguns in the home, and I'm giving away a little, little bit here, but okay, I'm just gonna tell you how I treat these. I keep shotguns staged in my home in very, very safe and secure locations. And the way that I treat a shotgun is as a New York reload. So if I'm going to use a shotgun in a defensive situation, if, if the situation is not resolved in the amount of rounds I have at my disposal in the shotgun, I'm simply going to throw this down and grab another shotgun. Mm -hmm. That's faster. I don't care how fast, of a reload, how fast you can reload a shotgun. It's faster to grab another shotgun if you are in the position to do that. So I very much believe that from a standpoint of payload and delivering lots of rounds, if I need to, I feel like staging up an additional shotgun is if you have the means to do it or if you live in a household where you can do that, obviously don't leave a gun laying around if you've got small children or any, any you know, concern of that, you know. In my situation, um, you know, I don't have small children around, so it's really no big deal and, and everything like that. But I guess I'm giving away a little bit here. But for me, I like the idea of staging them up because if I run out of ammo, I'm simply going to drop this sucker on the ground and grab another one. Like in, in New uh, York Reload. Like in Jurassic Park, you know? Oh, no, wait a minute. That gun jammed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it was a SPAS-12. It was a SPAS-12. Anyway. Um, now, another uh, limiting factor to semi-auto shotguns, in a lot of cases, a good quality semi-auto shotgun, fully loaded, all right, and with accessories to boot, okay, if you want to put a flashlight and a few other things in there to make it uh, more useful in a tactical situation, they are a little bit heavy, okay? Now, when you start adding weight to some certain uh, semi-auto shotguns, such as like the Benelli M2, Benelli M1, that operate on a, um, it's a, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm about to the Argo it. system. No, no, no. It's a inertia. Inertia. Right. Inertia driven. Yeah. So, uh, like the Benelli M2 or the Benelli M1 that operate on the inertia system. All right. When you start hanging more weight off of those shotguns, you have to run increasingly hotter loads to get it to function properly because a lot of it has to do, or a lot of the operation has to do with the actual weight of the firearm itself. Um, so you get into that that sort of complication. All right. But they are heavier, they are cumbersome, like Eric mentioned, they are long, okay, and ungangly. And when you want to make them tiny, right, then you start losing effectiveness, all right, because, uh, like, the wads aren't going to perform the same out of a short barrel as they will out of a longer barrel in most cases. Now, unless you go with something specialty like uh, the Federal Flight Control, especially the lower velocity uh, tactical flight control, those wads hold that shot together so well. I mean, we've shot... The, the low velocity stuff out of like the 14 inch 590A1s. Five, uh, five and I mean, it'll hold a fist size pattern at 35 yards. And that is dang impressive. The other uh, detrimental thing about getting into a shotgun, yeah, you can make the shotgun a lot shorter, like getting into the TAC 14 or some of the SBSs. But then another issue, you also lose magazine capacity you do. because the length of the magazine tube is directly attributed to the length of the barrel. Like yep. on this M4, we see that it's got the standard, you know, well, what they call a law enforcement tube on it. This is actually an LE gun. So this is an H2O that's LE. And it's actually kind of a hard gun to find. Mm -hmm. And this one has the real deal, you know, mm -hmm. collapsible 
uh, adjustable stock. And the reason that this stock is set up this way, just a quick note, is because if you're wearing body armor, you know, you're, if you have the thickness of the body armor, the reason this thing gets so tiny is it actually is the perfect length when you're wearing like real thick body mm -hmm. armor. So you're making um, up that difference. You are right. making up the difference. And this is the exact same type of shotgun that's issued to the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, not in this finish. I think they got some camo ones and black ones, but I don't, they might issue these in this color to the Marines, but mm -hmm. this is a, a very, very nice shotgun. But uh, anyway, yep. I think that, I think that pretty much kind of gets us into the ballpark we need to be in as mm -hmm. to, you know, are tactical shotguns effective? Are they good? Well, yes, any tool is effective in the right hands with the right training regimen. Uh, now, I believe I'll amend my original statement and I'll just say that with proper training, okay, and with um, a skilled shooter, a shotgun is a very, very, very effective and viable uh, means of self-preservation uh, for a wide variety of different purposes. And, uh, you know, I think that I'll just say it's probably the most difficult to master, which mm. is when you talk to a lot of instructors, again, I'm not going to say who, but some instructors, in fact, I would say 80% of all the firearms instructors that I talk to about semi-auto shotguns say, well, they're just too cumbersome to use. Mm. Well, what if I told you, uh, what if what if a firearms instructor told me, well, that gun, that pistol is too cumbersome to use, or that rifle is too cumbersome to use, or what if I showed up to a class and said, hey, sorry, I'm having a hard time with this platform that we're using in this class. You know what that instructor would tell you? They'd be like, well, you need to train on it and get better with it. So it's like you don't want to tell someone that you've had the discussion with, mm -hmm. well, maybe just because you can't use one well doesn't mean I'm not a surgeon with one. You don't want to be that person. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the fact of the matter is anything can be mastered. Mm -hmm. Just watch Jerry Mitchell run a shotgun and I'm pretty much rest my case. I mean, yep. so it's not to say they can't be employed tactfully and with really good effectiveness, but that the training requirements and the mental faculty for being able to control your movements and have that muscle memory to reload efficiently requires a lot of practice and time. I would to say master. I would say more so than it takes to master like a handgun or a rifle. Um, right. But one other thing to consider too is: is a tactical shotgun useless? Well, no. All right. Consider a tactical shotgun and a sporting shotgun, okay? You've got a long barrel on a sporting shotgun. You've got a small magazine tube and such. All right, can a tactical shotgun fill a lot of those roles? Well, absolutely. Can that shotgun fill a lot of the tactical roles? Maybe not so much, you know, because of that extra length and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned with the flight control wadding, there are a lot of shotgun shells now with very, very high-tech wads that even out of a shorter barrel, they perform much like their full choked, longer counterparts. I mean, just like we've discussed in other videos, ammunition technology has just gone crazy over the past several years, and there are some awesome advancements in ammunition, including shot shells. Um, but I think a tactical shotgun fills more of those roles than vice versa. That's Agreed. just another point. So. That's a really great point. And I'll just end this video by adding one more little tiny point to that. Uh, if you haven't seen, I, I did a video on this uh, shotgun that I have. Her name is Goldie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So it, it's it's a bronze Cerakote, and it's so gaudy. It's so ugly. Uh, but it's a Benelli M1 Super 90. It's a Super Black Eagle, mm. actually. Uh, but it's a Super Black Eagle in a three and a half inch Magnum chamber. And I added a Nordic Components extension. So it fits into one of those roles where, it's, yeah, it's a big old like 26 inch long barrel. Mm -hmm. And I just simply added a big long tube on it. And now I've got this crazy sporting shotgun that holds a lot of extra shots. It's like as tall as I am. Yeah, and it's it's huge and it's it's really cumbersome and it's really, you know, odd to maneuver in a tight uh, situation, but... Let's just say you wouldn't want to get into a gunfight in the closet with it. No, but you certainly wouldn't want to uh, have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe inside of 50, 60 yards with it either because that thing patterns mm -hmm. ridiculously good. And with the flight control or even like the big three-and-a-half-inch Magnum buckshot rounds, it is an absolutely a visceral wall of lead that that so, thing lays down range. So with that thing, see, you don't have to reload as much because it'll hold, what, like 13 or 14 shells? Something like that? Yeah. You know, just with the long barrel? It will. <laughs> oh, it does. It does. So anyway, uh, we hope that this video was informative and I know that we're going to ruffle some feathers. There's going to be all different types of opinions out there about this. So let oh, us boy. know in the comment section below, how do you feel 
about tactical shotguns, yay or nay? All right, and is there a point that we left out? Or have you talked to a trainer that told you something very similar? Or are you a trainer who thinks I'm full of crap? I don't care what your opinion is. Let me know in the, in the uh, comments section down below and we'll break out the popcorn and mm -hmm. read the comments. Okay, yeah, be seeing you. Uh, definitely want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. Go over to Ballista Kink. Pick yourself up a t-shirt. We'd greatly appreciate it, okay? I don't remember studying that in school. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, and also, we got some wonderful man cans for sale. Our medical box is awesome. If you need medical supplies or... Well, these man cans we put together, they are a ton of awesome gear that we put in this box. Uh, it's a great, not a mystery box, but it's a box of really useful stuff. Check them out. Uh, you know, you might want to pick one of those up, and that's also a way you can support the channel. So have a great day. We're going to go shoot our tactical shotguns. I'm a fan. I like them. Do you? I like them. I like boomsticks. All right. So. Guys, have a good one. We'll see you next time. Many more videos on the way. See you guys.